Hello and welcome to Hashtag Matters, the show that swallows coal and passes smellier coal. I'm your host, Sheepdog David Grant, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Stella Ingram. I've been a good girl this year and won't settle for coal or getting coal rolled. Coal rolled, nice, a reference only Southerners will get, and I don't think we have very many listeners in the South. Uh, Would you say that this is a news show? Yes, I guess. We talk about current events and politics and stuff. Yeah, if we could maybe get a Pulitzer someday, yeah. Okay, yeah, high hopes. Today we're talking about news sources, where people get information, and how much we can trust them to be fair, balanced, or truthful. Like us. Yeah, we're more of an opinion show. We're uh, editorialists. Give me that photo of Spider-Man. He's a menace. Okay, so today we have... A couple of amazing guests. Uh, the first is uh, uh, a wonderful panelist, one of my dear friends ever since college. Whenever I see him wearing a white suit, I find something to smear on it, metaphorically, of course. Mike Maletic. Wow, you remember. You remember my uh, issues with you smearing. <laughs> of course I do. Thanks uh, for having me on, man. Oh, thank you for coming. Our next panelist is one of Stella's oldest and dearest friends. They've known each other since middle school when they were covered in pimples, I'd imagine. And someone, uh, uh, she speaks many, what is it? I don't understand what she wrote here. Melissa Wong. Hello. <laughs> I have no idea what what was written there. It must be some hidden language that only the two of them can speak. That's wonderful. That's and right. last but definitely not least is uh, one of the first people that I thought of getting on this show. He's a rapper and he has a master's degree in physics. He's an activist and an artist, Lamar Glover. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the show. So as always, we're going to start off by talking about some of the trending topics. So here we have a story about a gentleman. You guys may have heard about him. His name is Anthony Weiner. He was sentenced to 21 months of jail uh, and three additional years of supervised release for sexting a minor. In May, Weiner confessed to transferring obscene material to the teenager at uh, earlier this year. He was also in contact with 19 other women at the time. Judge Denise Cote felt Wiener's notoriety made this verdict even more important. As far as we can tell, he's the first congressman to be registered as a sex offender. So that's pretty good. Turns out some of these women were the ones to initiate contact, including the 15-year-old girl. So what do you guys think about Anthony Wiener? What a Wiener. I feel bad for him. He deserves what he gets, but I, I feel bad for him. I did see the uh, documentary Wiener about him, and it, it was kind of right when he was running for the mayor of Numa. And I feel bad for him only in the sense that you're seeing a guy whose addictions are right out there in front for everybody to see. This guy obviously has a problem. I, I think he, I think he's a, a horrible person. He's doing horrible things. I never really liked the guy, but I look at him and it's just, he's just a pit of, and he looks pitiful. Like he physically looks because he looks cartoonish. He just, he looks pitiful. He looks like, uh, uh, just, just a sad case of everything that can go wrong in terms of being a man. Mm -hmm. Is he like a weasel and a rat made love and had him? Yeah. Know. Yeah. I, I, I know there's going to be some, um, you know, I don't want <laughs> to, there's some history with how. Never mind. Um, <laughs> yes. What about you, Lamar? Yes. What do you think about Anthony's Wiener? I mean, Anthony Wiener. Anthony's Wiener. <laughs> <laughs> I think Anthony Wiener's been out there for the whole world to see. It's part of the problem. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's just a. He's a guy who's um, like like man just said. Now he's he's a habitual uh, line crosser. He's. You do what he did is horrible, but you he obviously he's a broken person. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's like he's lost everything because of this, and he keeps doing it. And and it is also not only is it that, but it's an and um he um I think that uh the saddest thing about all of this is that none he's never going to get better. You know right. that uh those months in jail are not going to be the things that make him a better person. You know. He's not going to come out of there and be, I'm, I'm, I've been cured. No more dick pics for me. That's not going to happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, come out and do porn. He might come yeah. out and do porn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, 
yeah, it's a it's a very good chance that we haven't seen the last of Anthony Weiner. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, have you ever been lied to by a man who just continues to do what he said he was never going to do again? I mean, I know that you look like you're 12 years old all the time, so it must come up to you a lot. Uh, I don't think I've had it happen continually because I think if they uh if they continue to do that, I usually catch on mm. <laughs> and break it off pretty fast. Yeah, Hillary Clinton actually was the one that had to tell Anthony's wife to to back up, get out of that relationship. It's kind of, yeah, definitely. That documentary, if you haven't seen it already, I think it's on Netflix. Check it out. Um, this is a uh, an even worse way for that to go, I think. Uh, next story, U.S. rapper B.O.B., known for his hit songs Airplanes, I'll Be in the Sky, Strange Clouds, don't Let Me Fall, and We Still In This Bitch is a flat earther that's apparently fixated on the idea of falling off this planet, according to his song titles. It's rumored his favorite movie is At World's End, although our crack research team couldn't decide whether it would be funnier to suggest it was The Man That Fell to Earth, Gravity, or Up in the Air. Rumored to also be a big fan of Stranger Things because he thinks the upside down is where Chinese people live. Interesting. Anyway... He's crowdfunded. Uh, he's crowdfunding to launch satellites and weather balloons to see if he can prove the the Earth is actually flat. And he set a goal of one million dollars on GoFundMe. He's actually raised five thousand dollars as of our research last night. That's about mm, zero point zero zero five percent of his goal in just nine days. So that's pretty great. I'm looking for the curve. B.O.B. Interesting. One of the reoccurring themes in flat earth theories is the earth is round. Then the curvature of the earth would be more visible to the naked eye. In 2016, he got into a Twitter fight with Neil deGrasse Tyson over his missing curve. So, B.O.B., are you guys going to contribute to his GoFundMe? To yeah, to I mean, I would, but I think that's a horrible idea. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm all about people like I like the idea of actually uh, individuals crowdfunding to do like scientific research. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that I want to learn more about something like I'm not going to wait for a university or a private institution to like actually get to get to get together and do something. I want to do it and let's look do it and do it ourselves. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. However, like yeah. just like not even debating the science, just the money. It takes like somewhere around a hundred thousand dollars to get one pound of mass up into um the up into space. And when I say space, I mean like basically there's different levels to space. There's levels to this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to go to the moon, that's much much to where the International Space Station is. Um, but in order to get the stuff up there, like basically what the rate he's talking about, he's trying to get ten pounds into space with no infrastructure i mean he's just he's not his million dollar price tag is not going to get anything done maybe the weather balloon thing but I, there's all they are it's it's a silly thing mm -hmm. if you think about it from like this logistical thing there's already weather balloons up there and i guess he's going to make it himself how is he you know he doesn't know anything about making that sort of stuff so this is a silly thing what i would like to see is what's going to happen to all that money like, I just think he just came up on five G's, you know? Yeah, I so. think that's what's going on personally, too. What do you think, Mike? Do you think that he's just getting this money together for his personal funds? He, he has to be, or he's a very dangerous man. Uh, and I'm really, I'm really, uh, where I'm at, especially after this last election, is I'm really uh, discouraged by the level of discourse and, and, and just basic human intelligence that we think should be common. I mean, you don't need to know very much about science at all. You don't have to go into the depths of it to understand that, you know what, our cell phones, uh, uh, TV shows we get beamed in, we get because of uh, geosynchronous orbit of satellites. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just, you look at the moon, the moon is round, the sun is, there's certain level of understanding. It's, it's a waste of time, and it serves no purpose to get into an argument about something of two plus two equals four. It just some things just have to be accepted, and and there's no there's no equal weight. There's no two sides of an argument, um, and I'm just I'm just astounded that that uh, people like this should be shamed. They should be shamed. They have the right to do and say whatever they want to do, but they're bringing the level of of discourse down in this country and i've talked i've ran into people who will talk about you know r round flat earth and mm -hmm. and it's it, there's something wrong with them 
there really is something there's there's really I, I can't you can't it's such a it's a prime of faith fact that you can't get past that I, I there's something wrong with them and 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 they need to be pushed back against melissa are you a flat earther uh, and the fact that my walk is flat <laughs> <laughs> nice uh but, Just, uh but no no yeah I mean, the worst, it's not entirely round anyways. It's actually, what is it, oblong? oblong? Yeah. yeah. But no, that, that doesn't, doesn't hold up. <laughs> Lamar, you are a rapper and a physicist. You seem like the perfect person to be able to uh should to be get... driving them crazy, I would think. Well, <laughs> you, you should be able to get to B.O.B. Do you have anything, if, you, if he's listening now, do you have anything that you'd like to say directly to him? Nah, not really. I mean, like, what the reason why is that there's, like, the reason is... <sighs> The reason he thinks the Earth is flat is not because the Earth is flat, mm-hmm. obviously, because it's not. He has a, obviously a distrust of science, and he has a distrust of of, of anything that anyone with authority behind him says. My degree in physics actually hinders me talking to him. Mm. I've completely bought into the scientific Western science system. Right. I say to him, it's going to have zero validity. You know, it's the same as like a doctor talking to an anti-vaxer. You know, I'm a doctor. Yeah, well, I don't trust Western medicine. So that's why I don't believe in vaccines. It's the same thing. So, I mean, what's a bigger conversation is to having, which addresses the point I was making just now, was the idea that we don't, we have a a distrust of knowledge. Like there's like, there's facts and there's truth, you know, and we've conflated the two of them together. You know, Mm -hmm. facts are two plus two is four. A truth would be that two plus two is four is an important thing that we all should know, right? I, th- there's, we conflate those things and like think that we can um, argue truths because truths can be things of perspective, you know? Right. But facts are not perspective based, they, they just are things, you know? You can push back on Western science or Western medicine, but at the same time, you know, you can't push back on facts. And that's what's happening here. Mm-hmm. So. Facts are actually going to be a big point of what we're talking about today with the news as well. Okay. Melissa, did, did you, you have something else you wanted? Oh, actually, I was just thinking of an uh, article I just read uh, the other day, um, just going back to the Earth thing about being round versus flat, that um, it actually, I mean, I didn't know this, uh, it actually wasn't Columbus that uh, proved the Earth was round. That actually was known since um, the second century and it was discovered by uh Ptolemy, Claudius Ptolemy, and it was uh, well known by the Greeks and Romans at that time um, that the Earth was round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was actually revisionism um, in eighteen hundreds that uh, that Columbus even cared about the whether the Earth was round or flat. It's kind of a strange that we believe so readily that people in the past were gullible. I just I just want to throw out there that one a disc is round and flat. Two, the there is one person who donated a thousand and one dollars just to beat out the other person who be, who donated a thousand dollars. Yeah, it was just great. We were that looking out. at the donors, and these anonymous donors were like outbidding each other. It was great. So the quarter brainers, women don't deserve to drive because they only have a quarter of a brain. This, according to Sheikh Saeed Saad Al Hadri, which I'm sure I butchered his name, in his lecture on the evils of women driving, he continued his science talk by saying when d- women end up with a quarter of a brain while shopping, but usually have about a half a brain compared to men. The leader of fatwas, which means legal opinions, was banned from preaching, leading prayers, and other religious activities on the 21st, and five days later, the motion was passed to allow women to drive in Saudi Arabia. So... Mike, are you getting off the road? I'm not <laughs> going to be going to Saudi Arabia anytime soon anyway, so that's mm-hmm. going to... So yes, he's going to be off the road. But, I mean, good on them. I, I hope something like that spreads. Uh, I hope women have... Yeah, the one thing I'm concerned about personally is that it. I wondered what this is going to do to the economy, because a lot of the economy in Saudi Arabia is built around these these drivers. Um, not that I care too much that they're out of work, but it... Uh, it will have to do something to the economy, right? It would have to affect it some ways. Although, although isn't it kind of jerkish, though, is that, you know, we're going to have self-driving cars pretty soon. And right here at the end of where we are, now they'll let women drive for a little bit. And then self-driving cars are going to come in. And so <laughs> you had your chance to drive. Now it's robots. So that was nice of them on that regard, I guess. Lamar, as a scientist, do women use a quarter of their brains well, I'm a physicist, not a biologist. So, <laughs> and that's only when um, that's only when but, shopping, by but the way. I, but what I would gather is that there's probably um, how much brain you use is probably not dependent 
upon your gender. Mm. <laughs> there's, uh, you know, <laughs> so there's probably some folks who were like using a quarter of their brain, regardless of where they land on the gender spectrum mm. or the sex spectrum. Spectrum, but um, yeah. I think uh, I think bad driving is probably one of those equal opportunity things, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, we can. I, yeah, it's cool. People can drive. You know, I think it's going to the, the driving is not just about driving; it's about freedom, getting move around, mm -hmm. um, and and that's the whole reason why they couldn't drive. It's not because women can't drive. We let women like do the most precious things in us, like in our lives, like feed us, raise children. They're obviously capable of doing things. It's just that when you, but if, if it involves people actually going around and doing stuff like that they want to do, <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, you, then you can't do So uh, I'm actually in the room with two women that uh, would be considered um, stereotypically to be the worst drivers on the planet, right? We have two Asian women here with us. What do you guys think about that stereotype? Not only about women that can't drive, but specifically about you can't drive because you're an Asian woman. Um, it's it's difficult for me to have an honest opinion about that because I'm I'm uh, I have an enhancement of ethnicity, so I look vaguely white everywhere I go, including the South. It's just when you look at my face, that's when you can tell she's something, and you never know what it is. I've, so you never get judged for your driving based on right? Because I've had people ask me if I was like Russian, if I was Asian, if I was Hispanic. So I mean, I could be all over the map as far as my driving skills go. But I look mostly white, so they let me pass on it. Well, Melissa, what about you? Have you ever been judged for? I have. I have basically the same experience because, well, like Stella, we're, we're both half Asian, actually, so right. I get like a whole spectrum of people guessing what I am. Um, I'd say uh, if anything's gonna happen, I look really young, so that's gonna be mm. against me if people are gonna say like I can't drive. Right. But um, ultimately, no, I don't think anything has to do with how you drive. <laughs> It is <laughs> it is vaguely disappointing to try and make a U-turn, and then there's three guys, three construction workers, just based on how they look, watching you make this U-turn, and you accidentally run into a curb. It is very disappointing to have that happen. <laughs> I agree entirely. That is, that <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. Hey, Dave? Yeah? Can I offer a defense of women in this case against what the, um, the shake or whoever was making that proclamation Mm -hmm. Kind of a double-edged sword, though, is that women actually use more of their brain mm -hmm. uh, because the uh, the center, I think it's like the, uh, the cerebellum, or whatever the 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 thing going right down the middle of the brain, mm -hmm. they have more connections between right side of their brain and the left side of their brain because those parts of their brain communicate oh. more with each other. Oh. And, oh don't have that as well and that's why and that's why when it comes to like tasks and mechanical things typically you'll find that men can perform them better because we can focus on those things it also have something to do with why we don't have the empathy that women have is women are engaging more parts of their brain generally speaking uh given time than men and like i said that's why we can compartmentalize, compartmentalize we can we can focus we could uh, arrow down and so women actually use more of their brain uh, at it interesting hmm. I wonder if that might be true or if it's fake news. There's no way to tell. What do you think, Donald Trump? Fake news. Really? You really think it's fake news? Good news. You are fake news. Wow. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry. Stop it. Stella, why don't you take us on to our top topic? In a world where, fake, where facts are debatable and the topic of fake news is on everyone's tongues, but what do people mean when they use the term? On, of the big news sites we actively see every day and everywhere, Fox, MSNBC, and CNN are the top three. With the 24 news cycle, it's difficult to hear news without hearing from any of those three. According to Pew Research, around 22% of adults trust their local news organizations, while a whopping 60% trust the news somewhat. So they kind of trust it, they might have some facts, but only 22% of them believe that they have everything that I'm ever going to need to know. Um... While on the flip side, only 18% trust national news, while 59% believe that the national news is somewhat trustable. So and unsurprisingly, only 24% of adults believe the news media is fair, while 74% that there's some favoritism. So when we're looking at places like Fox, MSNBC, and CNN, 74% of us believe that, oh, Fox is going to be conservative, MSNBC is going to be liberal. We're just going to already know that and know that they're slanted. Um, but on a strange turn of events, 75% of adults believe that the news keeps political leaders from doing what they shouldn't be doing. So how is it that we know that they're already slanted and biased for like Fox and Friends and Trump, for instance, how they do that? But it's not really keeping 
but it's supposed to keep our political leaders involved. Like it's supposed to keep them from doing bad things, unless you're Anthony Weiner. Hmm. It's all fake news. Where do you guys get your news? What news sources do you do you trust oh, the most? I get it from the ether. No. <laughs> <laughs> Pluck it out of the sky. <laughs> yes, it just comes to me. <laughs> no, uh, I actually make a point to actually um, try to like have rankings. You know, mm-hmm. like um, like pretty much every U.S. Uh, news source has its leanings, right? Definitely. CNN's fairly liberal. It's like you know, class. Classic liberal. Um, uh, MSNBC is liberal slash progressive, but not radical. Mm-hmm. Fox and Friends or Fox or Fox News is conservative, but um, not a, but not conservative in the sense of a fiscal conservative, like a social conservative. Mm-hmm. You have like the Wall Street Journal, which is like fiscal conservative. So it's like you have all these friends in your living room, and you talk to them, but you have to know what. And they can um, – CNN thinks it's totally unbiased, but it totally is left-leaning, you know, right. and it's slightly left-leaning. It's not as left-leaning as it would like to, as some people portray it to be, but it's definitely not in the middle, you know. And um, I, feel, I don't think that's different from any time in history. I, yeah. I, think right. I remember growing up, I would see biased stuff in the news, just the way they portray certain stories, even locally. Um, it's just – it's just a human – I think it's – Part of the human condition that your perspective taints um, um, how you portray a story, you know, mm-hmm. or, or maybe not even taint, but informs it, you know. So I um, so I, I get my sort my news from like basically vetted sources like that, but I also take it with a grain of salt. There's some places that I don't take take anything from, mm-hmm. like because uh, it's just garbage, you know. Um, uh, and then there's some more like there's like organizations I don't take things from because they're super biased, you know, um, and I try not to post their stuff. And that list evolves and changes over time, too. It feels like it's growing and growing and growing. Absolutely. I uh, uh, and a lot of people are getting their news from from other sources as well. Um, you know, we have foreign sources like uh, BBC, uh, Al Jazeera. Um, I tend to see that the, those are a lot less biased, but um, but then again, Al Jazeera has been known to um, to kind of use propaganda as well in the past. Right. Um, what about you, Mike? Where do you get your news? I mean, uh, kind of in line with what Lamar was saying, because I do, I certainly make it a point. Well, you know, I I, I go to aggregators. Huff, Huffington Post is, is an awful, awful site, <laughs> um, but it'll it'll give me it'll give me a lot of the headlines and CNN. Uh, I do go to sites like redstate.com uh, because I do want to get the conservative point of view on that. So I do it, – it, it, it's a it's a cafeteria. It's a cafeteria, and I put a bunch of things on my plate. And, um, you know, when I say things, see things that just don't pass the smell test for me, then I'll go on to another site and get a, and try to get a broader picture. But I'm um, not necessarily Twitter, but there are people that I check their tweet, uh, Twitter accounts, and I'll go to like it, uh, Daily Beast uh, – uh, I try to get as broad a Drudge Report. I know it's full of a bunch of Infowars garbage and stuff like that, but I, I try to I try to get as broad of a picture as, as I can. Um, so yeah, it, it's that kind of thing, and 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 you know, it's not, it's, it's not for me to say what people should do in this regard. I just I, I would hope that people would be discerning because it seems like the biggest problem is we're just looking at uh, already fits what our biases are. And and by the way, the first bias I always think of when reading news is it's not. There is right and left, certainly. Uh, it's sensationalism. That's mm-hmm. the very first bias that it has. This sensation, yeah, the click. So trying uh, to get raised. Where is that going into it? Definitely. What do you think? Because you mentioned Drudge Report and you mentioned uh, Alex Jones. I want to play a clip. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. That would be Alex Jones, uh, very upset about the chemicals in the water that turn the frogs gay. Um, how did that happen? How did Drudge Report suddenly start posting these conspiracy theory sites right beside? And that's not just – it's not unique to the Drudge Report, but um, a lot of sites have started uh, – these these sites, these strange fake news, like straight-up fake news sites have become almost more popular in a lot of ways than mainstream media. And how did that happen? What do you guys think? And they understand that it fits the profile of the people that are coming to their sites. Yeah, because you all because what you also see there is a lot of interestingly, there is a lot of uh, he does a lot of story on exorcisms in the Catholic Church, mm. you know, which whether somebody believes in it or not, but uh, he he has an audience that's that he knows is already willing to believe certain things. So it's just a it's just a easy matter of, of filtering in a little bit of things like info. 
right the last spec bricks with him it's what kind of kickback from what but he has a built-in audience that's already ready to believe this stuff do you think that faith is a driving factor in the, the willingness to believe these things speaking yes of- because i think of yeah, because I think a, a big part of a religious faith, especially nowadays, uh, especially with uh, evangelicals, because Catholic is, is a little different. I think that is a big part of it because you're supposed to have faith no matter what. And Catholicism has more of a thing where it teaches important to have faith and doubt is an important part of faith. Mm. And see that in a lot of, say, Protestant evangelicals, you're supposed to believe no matter what. So I think you sus- suspend your reason, sus- uh, uh Critical, critical tests, mm-hmm. you're supposed to suspend that. So I think that, yeah, you will find a higher level of gullibility uh, in religious people, mm. I think. Well, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that it's necessarily um, totally for religious people, but I do think it opens uh, the door. It's like a gateway drug in a way yeah. to uh, to believing things that are almost supernatural. Melissa, do you believe anything that's a little bit strange or bizarre? That maybe isn't in part of the mainstream. Mm. I know that's a loaded question. <laughs> that also goes anywhere too. Not on the Go anywhere. I'm sure I could think of a thousand one examples uh, after this is over. I'm really tired right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, even though it's ridiculous, I like to believe in Loch Ness monster, even though I it's probably not existence anymore. I mean, <laughs> in which one? In what? I'm sorry. Loch Ness monster. I like to oh, pretend it's real. Monster. I like to pretend it's real. Yeah. I mean, I mean, most maybe doesn't believe that, but you know, small part of it does just for fun. Yeah. I mean, in the Reasonable 80s, one. growing up, I remember hearing that was kind of the big thing is inquiring minds want to know and National Enquirer was a big thing. Now, I I was so shocked when I saw um, a recent National Enquirer. You can see what age group is purchasing that because they've definitely picked aside on the political ideology it's all like look at the obamas and how awful they are and their daughters are terrible and look at how beautiful the trumps are it's well, trump's friend owns that paper yeah. paper rag trump's trump's friend mm. mm-hmm. yeah and that, that's corporate aspects of of these major media companies oh so the other the segueing into another part of it is that when we go to only online news sources such as the economist um slate glenn beck um the validity and bias starts to skew everywhere because you can you go to those sites and like for instance with the glenn beck with glenn beck you kind of already know where he's going to lean and what kind of show you're watching um breitbart the onion infowars HuffPo, um buzzfeed or a few of the top circulated sites that also feed into other news sites such as fox and cnn Pew Research once again gave us an insight on the levels of each tr- um, trust of each site by ideological group. The Economist, BBC, NPR, PBS, Wall Street Journal, Google, and Bloomberg are all listed as some of the top trusted news sites, um, with The Economist being the number one. Slate, Breitbart, and Huffington Poe are about equally trusted and distrusted, so people will go there for a headline just to see what they might be talking about, maybe read the first paragraph or sentence, and then move on to something else that they trust. And then you've got, um, as the least trusted, Al Jazeera, Glenn Beck, Sean Hannity, and BuzzFeed, which is kind of surprising to me because the times that I've ever read Al Jazeera um, news articles, they actually seemed really fair and balanced. Like they were going in depth on, well, here's the facts that we know them. This is what they did. This is how they were reacting. This is what the potential possibilities are going to be. Well, I I can speak a little bit about Al Jazeera because I, I did a lot of research for my book um, that's coming out, Home Street, and it did a lot of research in the war. And uh, Al Jazeera is, I've seen some of the most incredible journalism uh, I've ever seen on Al Jazeera, but they, they really do kind of, um, they'll put pictures of people that were killed in bombings that weren't because Part of, of the American, well, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll sensationalize a bombing in order to, um, to create propaganda, which is definitely something that, turned off a lot of U.S. soldiers um, when they were over there, and then they came back home, and yeah, for sure. Um, I want to talk a little bit about sharing fake news. I know that we've probably all been guilty of doing that on our own walls. You see something, and it looks believable, and you share it, and you're outraged by it, and then somebody posts on it, uh, here, check out this link to PolitiFact or Scopes. Uh, You're wrong. That didn't happen. How do you handle those situations? And how? Why are we all so susceptible to believing these things? 
Well, I mean, the reason we're susceptible to them is that it's like, uh, why are we susceptible to being robbed? Or, you know, because there's a robber out there who's made it their job to take what's yours, you know? Mm -hmm. There are people out there who create content with the sole purpose of it to be, to seem like it's legit and it's not, you know? So it's it's not necessarily a, a failing of ours, you know? Right. Um, the only failing that we can do is uh, not do our due diligence to, to actually look a quick uh, verification, a research verification that nowadays we have the internet so, like, we have no excuse not to just spend a few, like, half a minute more just to quickly Google something to see if it pops up and get a similar story to that one when you don't when you don't fully trust the source. And then there's some sources where you can pretty much, you know, fully trust it in terms of if you read it and it's, the facts in there are going to be legit. Like, if it was CNN or, like, LA Times, New York Times, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't have to feel the need to fact check that. I might, that's the thing is a lot of stories aren't just facts, though. They're also a uh, commentary as well. I think that's the hard thing nowadays is that we live in this information age where there's there's a lot of innovation when it comes to the way we cover stories, but not a lot of um, um, new way. It's not a lot of new content. It's a lot of new interpretation to content. So a lot of stuff we see like on those aggregating sites like HuffPo or even Breitbart are just people basically taking a story that already exists and giving their spin on it, you know. There's not a lot of journalism that's happening. It's not a lot of people hitting the ground with their, with their feet and finding out new stuff. Um, that's one of the reasons why you, like Al Jazeera is a good example of good journalism because they actually were actually legitimately doing journalism. Mm -hmm. You know, they were going out and getting stories and bringing it back. They weren't just recycling things or giving you know, an interpretation of something that's already out there. Right. So I think that, that's the uh, thing designed to, 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 to fool us. They're all feeding to our... Um, our um, uh, confirmation bias, and, and when that happens to me, when I get tripped up, you know, I try not to. But when I do, I leave it up there, edit my post, and let people know it's wrong. I leave it there as a, as a monument to my foolishness, <laughs> so like so people know that I make mistakes too. Just like they do. So. Yeah, absolutely, Melissa. Have you ever shared a story that you know wasn't uh, accurate? And what did you do? Not knowingly. Um, I would just say anecdotally throughout life, if somebody tells me something, um, I don't check it, then I may have shared it. Um, but going back to the, um, being susceptible to fake news, um, I think a lot of it depends on your own beliefs. Like, uh, for example, if you believe strongly about something, you see a fake news article that goes with that belief, then you're going to share it, obviously, um, with other people, especially people that don't believe you, um, your own perspective. But, um... I don't have a Facebook. Let me to put that out there. <laughs> oh, well, that so, makes it harder to share. Those yeah. Um, so I, I feel like I maybe encounter fake news less because of that. Because um, I get my news from uh, actually a lot of the sources that you put as most trustful sources, NPR especially. Mm -hmm. So I like to believe that that helps me avoid it. Um, maybe not always, but, you know, most of the time. Yeah, I've seen, I've noticed that um, even the stories that I see trending on my wall or whatever they're less from time magazine or uh, uh life or you know any of these trusted news sources and they're more for um like occupied democrats or red state um interestingly 55 percent of americans uh, 50 or older reporting getting their news from social media which was up from 45 percent according to pew research so Everybody seems to be getting their news from the Internet, including our president, because I, I would like to mention um, something that happened during the election that didn't hurt the president. So where you get your news doesn't necessarily hurt you. He was on Fox News. He was on Bill O'Reilly, uh, which is like the lion's den for for uh, right wing politics. And Bill O'Reilly was correcting him on a news story that he was saying was true. He said that there were thousands of um Arabs, Muslims in uh, in New Jersey cheering on 9-11. And Bill O'Reilly kept saying that didn't happen. And he held up a printed up copy from Breitbart and said, why is it in this news story then? Um, so does, does following fake news hurt you in this new post-truth America? I mean, what are you trying to prove? I mean, th I think that's the biggest thing is that if you're going to take fake news and use it as an example what is your ultimate goal? Are you using it to say, look at this, this is being circulated around, but this isn't the actual truth? Or are you trying to say, look at this, I am proven right, and you should all believe me and give me money? Like, it's 
What are you trying to prove? Yeah, exactly. Um, what's your whole purpose for doing that? Um, are you trying to destroy things or just, you know, trying to have a good time? Right. I feel like a lot of people are just trying to joke, but I mean, I think there's also people, business, like, you know, a good amount of people out there that just want to cause havoc. Right. And how, how public is this doing? Like for me, I'm, su- I'm a super private on my Facebook anyway. So whatever I'm sharing, it's going to be like kind of my own, only my friends, not even friends of friends that see it. So if I'm posting fake news, I'm assuming that my friends will know. But if you have a public profile or if you're on Twitter publicly liking um, porn, I think people will take it completely differently. Lamar, I think I heard a a thought starting over there. Oh, no, I just I I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a um, very public profile just in the nature of what the work I've done. I do a lot of nonprofit work over for over a decade or with a lot of youth and um so I keep my profile open and public, not clean, but just public. So I know that um, I have people who tell me on a regular basis that they, they're they checking for my content, you know. Mm. So I know that there's responsibility with that, you know, and then you have to, uh, uh, you know, you, you have to uh, act accordingly. It is a public arena, even when you're in closed or private groups, you know, that's still a public arena as well, too. You recently so. shared a story that I thought played really well into this conversation um, did you want to, did you want to talk in the, at all about that? Oh, was it the one with the guy who died? Yes. Name. <laughs> but it's not <laughs> funny that he died. I shouldn't be laughing. I'm sorry. That's I all right. Go the but, uh, this guy is not, he's not a nice person. So he's part of the prop. We have a discussion we're having right now. Is he's one of the main architects behind it. And, um, but, uh, basically he was a guy who basically proclaimed that he's a reason that Donald Trump won because he was behind a bunch of fake news articles, not just like, I don't agree with HuffPo or Breitbart fake. Like these were legitimately not true. Like he would say things in articles that just were factually untrue, mm-hmm. not to for up debate, but they got spread like wildfire and they worked against Hillary Clinton and they worked for Donald Trump. And he says that the, he was part of the reason why Donald Trump won. Yeah, I think he, that's... Um, sorry. No, he died. He, he had a drug overdose and he died recently, like in the last, within this past week. Um, a lot of people, my friends are on the left side of things. So they were basically dancing on his grave, you know? Mm. And like, like my chuckling just, you know, I was not upon anybody, but... Like, I, it's hard to shed a tear for someone who did something, purposely did something that was uh, so dastardly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's one thing if I don't agree with you on politics. And another thing is, like, you're purposely trying to, like, disrupt uh, dialogue about things to get the country moving forward by throwing out lies out there, knowing the truth, you know. And I, that's, I feel like that's a special place in hell for stuff like that. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, Stella, you alluded to a little bit earlier what is it for? I mean, a lot of people don't understand that when they talk about the Russians hacking the election, what they're talking about is a flood of fake news. And um, interestingly enough, Americans tried to flood um, France with fake news to uh, to help them pass, uh, to help them vote for a more fascist government. And it was uh, the French in great French fashion were upset because uh, and they laughed at the Americans because all the articles were written in English. Right. <laughs> which is hilarious well, it also i think it also comes down to not necessarily fake news more as like undisclosed news or unpertinent news you have things that are going around and being circulated that don't really pertain to what's going on but you say it because you know it'll incite a emotional response from people who already object to what's happening so i mean it's not just necessarily that it's going to be fake it's going to be i'm intentionally going to disrupt everything that's going on i know that this will trigger these people to do things. So I'm going to intentionally throw the word snowflake into this. Absolutely. And trolling for the sake of trolling nowadays. So we are out of time. I wanted to take a moment and get final thoughts from each of you. Let's start with Melissa. What are your final thoughts about uh, fake news and distrust of the media? Well, fake news sucks, obviously. (laughs) Yeah. Let me, let, me, let me reiterate that I'm really tired. <laughs> but distrust of the media, as far as that goes, um, I think uh, distrust, uh, uh, that amount of it is good. I mean, you always want to have some questioning for, uh, for thank you, Stella, for the background. <laughs> um, some distrust is, is a good thing that made me more tired. <laughs> 
but because um, you always want to be able to think about their perspectives and whether and of course there's a fake news being, being is so uh, prolific today of whether it's really true or not what you're reading but um at the same time um distrustful being trustful of the media being distrustful of the media there are people that go out there and risk their lives to expose what's happening in the world so i think uh that has to be kept in mind as well um excellent point lamar final thoughts on the subject oh um just remember that everyone has a story to tell you know and the story is told from the, from how they see the world so even even so just remember that whenever you get you get something it's a story and that you have to remember that about the perspective where they're coming from and um just don't feed the trolls don't feed the trolls excellent point mike final thoughts yeah i just want to yeah uh and and i'll I'll try to combine some things because there was there was actually a large part of the discussion that it just cut out on my end i couldn't hear Mm. um i just want to say there's been no small small uh, sense of despair for me because you know i I, I don't want to let the news providers the media off the hook entirely that they have some part to play this but every one of us nowadays has a device that has more information than the library of, of congress um, it really, there was a good time in our history, recent history, I think, when things like The Daily Show came up and, and YouTube came out where there was going to be a record in video and audio of what this person said and this person said and that person said. And and, and you can go back and, and, and Daily Show was really expert at doing this of like, that's what this person said then. These are not the facts that, that we know them. And that's why maybe for a while they were the most trusted uh they're the news is because they actually called out a bunch of BS and go to the record. You could see what somebody said. You could see what somebody did. You could there was actually recorded history that you could refer to, and we've blown right past that because it really doesn't matter anymore. And it's just about how we feel. And these these sites uh, like Facebook and, and other social media, they they know that anyways because the important thing we're in the information age. Information's not important anymore. Information's available to anybody place where it's about uh awareness and attention time on site what what are you going and looking at what are you spending your time looking at and researching and fine but uh my my ultimate thesis would be are the uh, we are responsible for the information that we take in we have no excuse we have absolutely no excuse for continually getting it lets the media off the hook when when we're as uninformed as we are. Absolutely. You're cutting in and Everybody's out. Everybody's responsibility. It's cutting in and out a little bit, unfortunately, um, but I think we got the, the message there. Stella, what is your final thought on this? Um, that you need to, that not you, Ness, not you as in people who are speaking, but <laughs> as you listening <laughs> yes, right now. you, the particular, and you as in all. Um we all need to be able to get our news from various sites. We should be able to go to Fox, CNN, and Al Jazeera and realize that they're presenting us maybe with hopefully the same facts, but at least with more uh, a different prism of ideas and ideologies, as well as being able to look at um, YouTubers who you have people like Philip DeFranco or the Young Turks. You can go to them as a different source of um, who gather all the information and you can actually hear what their point of view is and disagree or agree with it and build your point of view from that too. So I think being able to use the media as an entirety is much more helpful than um, just trying to look at one news article that you found from one random site. Alex Jones, what's your final thoughts? Don't trust humans. Oh, good. Wear fluffy socks. Wisdom from Google X. Uh, Okay. See, they're already saying don't trust humans to drive cars. Time magazine. Don't trust humans. The new liberal system, the computers will make the decisions. Where have we heard that before? Oh, Rockefeller Foundation funded groups the New York Times promotes. Movies, perhaps, where we get rid of money and the computers make all the decisions. But don't worry, the makers of the films talk in little lisping voices and are liberal. I resent your lisping voices. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you so much to all of our guests, Melissa, Lamar, Mike. Uh, I'm going to give my final thoughts here, but I wanted to release our guests first because I know that Lamar has very important physics uh, stuff to do. So, Lamar, thank you so much. Mike, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And so, Good to meet you, Lamar. Always Thank you.
as my final thoughts on the subject, I basically just want to read something. Um, this is maybe going to be a new segment that we do. I'm not sure. Um, but I wanted to read something that's right off of my wall. Um, so I posted a few days ago. I said, I have a divisive point of view, and I'm sick and tired of people who don't share it. I don't have the fortitude to challenge my beliefs as I am secretly afraid. They won't hold up to scrutiny, and I like to pretend what I believe is just common sense. If you don't agree with my specific ideology, which came about as a result of my unique experiences, then you can do me a favor and click a button I am too lazy to press on the social media website and unfriend me right now. This is something I think, in other words, people have seen quite frequently um, because it got quite a response. Uh, So some of the comments that I got from that... Uh, Josh Chambers said, this is my opposite and unwavering point of view that I'm going to tell you about, even though you didn't ask for it. If you have any retort at all, I'm going to throw my hands up and say that it was just my opinion and I'm exercising my first amendment rights. Uh, Kenny Bentley said, I'm blatantly and angrily disagreeing with your entire post. Having read only the first sentence based on what, whatever news source I watch religiously has told me is right. Uh, Let's see what we've got. (laughs) There's a bunch of really great comments. Uh, I think it would be great if you leave a comment on this podcast uh, that is um, something that you've seen frequently that just drives you crazy um, on your Facebook wall or your Twitter account. Uh, Let's get that conversation started. Maybe we can talk about that on a future episode of Hashtag Matters. But this has been our episode today. Hashtag Matters. Please tune in next week. And our topic will be something else.